All right, gang, here we go. This is for physics. Unit 10, part six. We're gonna talk about effective current and transformers. Should be lots of fun. All right, so <clears throat> we've talked a lot about electromagnetic induction and this relationship between electricity and magnetism and how magnets or a magnetic field, when it's changing, the flux of it is changing, it can induce a current. And when uh, something has a current, it, it produces a magnetic field, right? And then uh, we can also, you know, when we have uh, these things moving, we have two different right hand rules in order to determine both the direction of the magnetic field, the current, uh, and then the velo and then another one relating the direction of velocity, magnetic field, and a force applied to a moving particle, specifically a moving charge. All right, so that's what we're looking at, um, and so that's where we're coming from. All right, and then we jumped into talking about uh, motors and electrical generators, and we then we talked about mutual inductance. All right, so remember, electrical generators primarily were made because we're rotating some uh, loop of wire through a, a constant magnetic field. And as we're rotating that loop of wire, the, uh, the magnetic flux changes. And because the magnetic flux is changing, um, we have a current that's being generated on that uh, loop of wire. Okay. And so remember that if we were going to draw what that thing looks like, um, it would look something like this. If this was our, you know, our current or our voltage, you know, we'd alternating current would go up and down like this. It would do this kind of number like that. Whereas uh, a direct current, like if we were going to draw the same sort of graph with a direct current, remember the direct current would do this kind of number. It would all be constant. All these should be at the same height and the same width and all that stuff. But anyway, and so our alternating current flips back and forth, whereas the direct current always just stays positive. You know, it just kind of goes up and then down, up, down, up, down, up, up right back to zero um, so now the thing is if you were going to take the what occurs okay is um, there's kind of a weird phenomenon that like uh, when they first developed current or that when they first started investigating uh, electric flow current and stuff like that uh, the primary method that we generated electricity was using voltaic cells you know using uh, using two uh, electric or two uh, metals and their ions put in solution connected via a wire uh, would conduct electricity via redox reactions reduction oxidation reactions so the first time we really encountered uh, this type of react this type of system was using those things right and so since they were voltaic cells produced electricity generated by a chemical reaction it made a direct current all right and so we learned quite a bit about uh, voltages and currents and so on and so forth it, but it was all in related to direct current and then as the technology started to progress we started to develop ways to generate electricity uh, and those ways we started developing electricity was using alternating current and what they found was is that when we used alternating current, the uh, current values that we got from those alternating currents were always less than what they'd expect for direct current. Okay, and um, and so and part of that is because of the way alternating current works. If you take the average of an alternating current, that average is going to come out to be zero. The peaks and the troughs will cancel each other, right? And so your average over time, you'll have an average value of zero. Um, but if you do the same thing for a direct Direct current, your average would be some positive value. Your average would be up here somewhere, right? Because there's no negatives or there's no troughs to cancel out your peaks. It'd probably actually be a little higher than that, but whatever. All right. Um, and so alternating currents are always going to be less than uh, effect, than direct currents. And so we get this idea of effective current, which is the actual measure of how much current is going through our circuit at any given moment. All right. And so in order to get that value, uh, a very convenient mathematical trick here is using the root mean square. We're not going to get into the where the root mean square comes from or anything like that. But it's a very, very helpful thing uh, that takes, you know, at, um, it's a statistical analysis term. That, um, or methodology that uh, has a lot of useful applications in science, okay, in statistics. All right, but it's the, so, so we're going to use the RMS here. So the root mean square, the RMS current of a circuit is the value of the alternating current that gives the same heating effect that, of the, uh, that the corresponding value of direct current does. Okay, and so here's your what your RMS is equal to this formula here. So your these are I's. So your current RMS current is equal to your maximum current uh, divided by the square root of two, and the, or the same one over the square root of two is the same thing, but as multiplying by 0 0.707. All right. 
So uh, these are really important ideas and we can actually get uh, RMS currents and then we also get RMS potential differences or RMS uh, EMFs. Okay, and so the, the, here's your ideas here. You've got your instantaneous values of your delta V uh, would be a lowercase v, and then your delta uh, lowercase i would be the instantaneous value of your current. Okay, these are more for calc based physics. We're not going to deal with those very much. All right, and then your maximum value would be your delta V max, and then your i max, and then your RMS values would be uh, your potential difference RMS. You know, same formula as what we just established right there. All right, let's do a practice problem. It says a generator with a maximum output of 205 volts is connected to a 115 ohm resistor. Calculate the RMS potential difference. Find the RMS current through the resistor. Find the maximum AC current in the circuit. All right, so first step says is calculate the RMS potential difference. Well, we know from before this formula we just had right here that the VRMS is equal to the Vmax over the square root of 2. So the VRMS is equal to the Vmax divided by the square root of 2, or the 0 0.707 times the Vmax. Our Vmax is right here, 205, right? It says 205, so we take 205 divided by the square root of 2, okay? So we go 205 divided by the square root of 2, okay, and we get 145 volts. Cool. Now it says uh, calculate, find the RMS current through the resistor. Well, the RMS current will use the VRMS because we know V equals IR, so that means I is equal to V over R. All right, so we can use our new V value, which is the 145, divided by current, which is 115. You multiply those together and you'll get 1.26 amps. Pretty easy stuff, right? And then last one asks us to find the I max, the current, the maximum current. Well, we know that the I RMS is equal to the I max, get it, I max, divided by the square root of 2. So that means the maximum current is equal to the square root of 2 times the I R M S. And if you multiply root 2 times 1.26, you get 1.78 amps. All right, pretty easy stuff. Essentially just taking your values, plugging, chugging, rotate, rolling with the punches. All right, last thing here, we got to talk about transformers. Transformers are super, super helpful piece of technology. And what they do is they uh, increase or decrease the EMF of an alternating current, okay? So we've talked about this very briefly before, but power companies, obviously, they want to conserve as much energy as they can as they're transporting energy from the generating plant to our houses or to whatever business is gonna use them, all right? And so in order to preserve that power and make, them, uh, make the resistance of the wire as negligible as possible, they'll transmit that energy to us at a very high voltage but a low current. All right, but, uh, and we're talking about many tens of thousands of volts, but you should know now by now that the voltage coming into your house is either 120 or 220, right? Or 210, 120 or 210, all right? As it's coming into your house. So anyway, and it just depends on what applications, you know, some of the, you know, the bigger appliances in your house have a higher voltage rating than like the light bulbs or your computer or whatever else that you're using, okay? So anyway, um, so in order to get the many ten tens of thousands of volts that are coming into your neighborhood down to a usable potential, uh, we use transformers, all right? And so the transformer equation is this guy right here. And so note that these are not Decepticons and Autobots, right? These are uh, these little gray boxes. A lot of times you'll see them in like Godzilla movies when Godzilla starts walking through power lines. This is where the sparks start flying is at the transformers, okay? Um, and so this is, the formula is pretty easy to use. Delta V2 is the induced EMF in your secondary coil, all right? And then N2 is your uh, is the turns in your secondary, N1 is the turns in your primary, and delta V1 is the applied EMF in the primary. All right, so let's let's go back here and look at mutual inductance because this is really the technology these guys are based off of is this guy right here. So you've got a primary coil that's the, you know this guy right here, and so this is your primary circuit, and the primary circuit is completely separate from the secondary circuit. They're not touching each other whatsoever. All right. And about the the primary circuit if you you know flip it on and off on and off then it starts to generate you know turn it on it generates a, a current through this coil and this coil because it's a solenoid it creates its own magnetic field and this magnetic field gets transmitted and affects this iron ring and this iron ring becomes its own little magnet magnetic field kind of generator 
right? And th that makes sense because iron is uh, ferromagnetic, so it can change uh, based on magnetic fields that are applied, all right? And so uh, because it's generating its own magnetic field, it creates a magnetic field that's changing inside this co secondary coil, and the secondary coil is going to start generating electricity, or is going to have its own current running through it. All right. And so if we change this guy either by turning up and down the current as it passes through it, or maybe just simply flipping it on and off, on and off, on and off, then the flux changes as it's going through here, and we'll get a magnetic field. All right. And then because of that magnetic field changing, we'll get a current running through this coil. Okay, so th that's essentially what we're working with when we're talking about transformers. All right, and so we can, uh, uh, we've got some EMF coming in our primary, that's our delta V1, our potential difference in the primary. And then from there, we're going to uh, convert, <clears throat> we're going to, um, from there, we're going to multiply it by the ratio of the turns in the secondary versus the primary, and that's going to give us the EMF in the secondary. Okay, uh, so here's our transformers here. Okay, the transformer equation assumes that no power is lost between the primary and secondary coils. All right, now that's that's a pretty big assumption. You know, really having a completely efficient transformer is not very likely, but um, it, it can't hurt, right? <laughs> that's the assumption we're making with that formula we just used. All right, real transformers are not perfectly efficient though, but they are pretty dang efficient. It's one of those another one of those cases where economics drives innovation uh, because you know power companies want to make sure that they can make as much money as they possibly can from their uh, from transmitting their power all right they uh, when they transport that energy they make sure that they uh, that they lose as little as possible and since transformers is a place where they can lose energy they make sure to you know really innovate there and so they lose as little as possible but anyway so let's look at this guy here this is uh, this is a a, an ignition coil set up, you know, mock up from what happens in your car when you start your car. You've got your ignition switch, you know, underneath your steering wheel or something like that, and then you've got your battery in your car. You flip the ignition switch, you turn your ignition, right? It lets the power travel through here. And then, uh, so that's going through your primary coil. And, and if we follow the primary coil path, it comes up here and it goes like this, right? And so the, the second, the, you know, this primary coil doesn't have very many loops, right? It's got like uh, six loops or so. And then it comes back out and around down here. Now the secondary coil is the one that's attached to the spark plug. And the secondary coil, look at this, it has, you know, dozens of loops as it goes up here, right? So dozens and dozens of loops. So that means our N2 is gonna be bigger than our N1. All right, so if our N2 is bigger than our N1, that means our induced EMF is going to be bigger than our initial EMF. So even though we only have a 12 volt battery leading into our car, our ignition coil is going to make the EMF that goes to the spark plugs much, much, much higher. All right. And so the, you know, we get a much higher EMF through this cord. All right. And so this uh, spark plug here, you know, we've got a, the power going through here. And then, so this would be the anode. And then the cathode here is out the outside or the cathode and the anode, anyway. And so uh, you've got this guy here, and so the, you know you get a little spark here as it transmits for electricity through here, and then it can pass up through through the wire and can complete the circuit. All right, so that's transformers. It's just generally how they, ooh, I realized I was just covering up most of the picture, so let's, let's go up here. So here's your spark plug back down here. So it comes down here, get that spark, and then it can come up here. All right, let's do, um, that's it. All right, I thought there was a practice problem, but I guess not. Anyway, so uh, not too bad. You just take this equation, you just plug and chug, uh, getting that stuff figured out. Anyway, so if you have any, or let, do your practice problems, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the flip side.